Hannah. And I'm Shantaya. Our question was to tell you what our hopes for healthcare are. You have no idea how long we thought about this, but to be honest, it was right in front of our faces. Now recently, we had a project of our own called Change Day. For Change Day, you had to make a pledge. It didn't cost any money. You made a pledge on your physical and mental health. During this great project, we met lots of interesting people, such as Kathy Heritage, Shelly Lynn Gardner, and her service dog, Kenna, who all worked for Fraser Health. Yes, even the dog. We also met Kevin Smith and Colleen Kennedy, who worked for BC Patient Safety Quality Council, and Mr. Peter Fassbender, our MLA. Some of our hopes for healthcare are improving health issues. One of the health issues we definitely hope to improve on are people's hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is an important and big topic. It's something so important that if we don't take care of this issue, it could lead to all sorts of diseases. When people walk, run, even sprint through those hospital doors, 85% of them, to be precise, become non-hand washers. We can help <laughs> improve this problem by putting more hand washing stations in more public places. For example, schools, transit areas, even more. Now I know 25% of you might not even know, but too much hand sanitizer isn't good for you. Let me tell you something, it's not. Our idea was to fill hand dispensers with water and soap. Our second hope was for everyone not to stop having hopes and dreams. First off, I'd like to ask you a question. Can you imagine a world with no hopes or dreams? Well, let me tell you something, Shantea. I don't even want to consider imagining a world with no hopes or dreams. So let's forget that question. <laughs> and remember that before we did Health Talks, there was an award ceremony. Congratulations for everyone who got one. And for everyone who was there, um, this would have never happened without hopes or dreams. As Dr. Don Bruick once said, the systems thinker is a perpetually curious person who never has a whole answer but is always willing to find the next step. We hope that people don't stop having these great ideas and big dreams because without them, healthcare would never improve. Now you actually don't know how long we actually took to say perpetually. It was like a long time. <laughs> so, we want young people, whether they're teens or Shantae and I's age, to learn about and be educated about healthcare so that there is a better chance of healthcare improving. Now, during Shantae and I's brainstorm, we actually thought of our own little quote, and it goes like this If the kids of today stop having big or small dreams, then the kids of tomorrow have nothing to look up to. My hopes and dreams are something I had to think deep down on. Because if you ask a kid what are their hopes and dreams, they'll say, why do I need to think about this? And why should I know? But going in deeper, I find they have really cool and interesting stories. And some of them um, we should really use. Our last hope was for, to expand our welcoming committee. Did you know in a small town, there is about 900 people who daily go to the hospital and 118 who stay overnight? And that's just in a small town. The reason why we want to expand the welcoming committee is because the people who do stay overnight, whether it's because surgery, pneumonia, or a person in labor, most of the staff introduce themselves. And that's great. That's awesome. They make them feel welcome, like home. Unfortunately, not all people make them feel welcome or comfortable. We would really like to change the situation because imagine you staying overnight. Would you like your stay? I know I would hate to be there if I wasn't welcome, I wouldn't feel safe, and I would feel scared. Now, we are not trying to say to get a confetti cannon, but we can get people to have a conversation with the patient and make them feel welcome, less stressed, which is something we would all agree is good for all ages. So Hannah, it looks like if staff are more friendly, patients wouldn't be stressed out and that doesn't lead to anything, not even exhausted patients. 
and no one wants to be at a drowsy hospital. Shantea, I think you're onto something there. When the, hos when the hospital staff aren't communicating to the patients, they won't feel as home as they wish they were. They would be scared and stressed out, especially if they had pneumonia. They would be not as willing to get a checkup to see if they were in pain or needed any medication or something. Exactly, and we both know that's bad, and that's why that is one of our hopes for healthcare. Thank you for listening, and have a great evening.